Welcome to my podcast, guys. If you are here to work on your relationship with your child, then you are for sure in the right space because you will always, always have to work on your relationship with yourself. And this is what I offer here on my podcast. So if you listen to my podcast and hear things that are completely, are not obviously related to your son, listen on because whatever uh, you improve in your relationship with yourself will automatically improve your all of your relationships, including with your son. So welcome and enjoy. Hello, everybody. How are you? I am back. I wasn't away for you, but I was away for me. Well, I went on a trip and now I'm back. So I feel like, hey, I'm back. Hello. So I went to Toronto to help my parents move and we had so much fun. We It was like a great vacation for me. And I think uh, my parents kind of had a change of scenery. Uh, I helped. I had so much fun helping. And we just got to do a lot of cool stuff. I saw their new town that they're living in, the new house. I got to help. We got to visit with some of my nephews and my brother. It was just good. It was so awesome. I I felt like I was on vacation, even though I was helping. So I learned how fun it is to help on a different level. So it was all good all around. So um, today, here's what I want to tell you. I want to be honest with you right now. I do not feel like recording this right now. And here's how it can be useful to you. You can use this uh, tool concept that I use for me to get rid of mom guilt, okay? Here's how. So there's this concept that my teacher teaches, and I've seen a lot of people kind of do it in different ways. And basically, it is um, uh, a concept that says better um, done is better than perfect, Okay, that's one way to say it. Another way to say it, that's how my mom says it. And another way to say it is uh, B minus work. Okay, and that's how I really do things sometimes when I have to do them. Like I have to record this podcast because I made a commitment to show up for all of you, to show up for my business, to show up for my dream, to have this business to help people. And so, but because I am a human, I don't always feel like doing this. Right, so I then tell myself, okay, it, it's better that it's going to be done than perfect, right? Because when I start recording it, which I already did start, my brain tells me a lot of reasons why this is not good enough. It has doubts about what I'm talking about. It's like, oh, it's you're not ready. You didn't prepare enough. You should just stop. You should re-record. You should prepare. You should do it tomorrow. You should do it later, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And if I listen to it long enough, then I will delay it. I will not do it. And I will procrastinate and I will do it tomorrow. But I am now good enough at cutting it off and just doing it, even if it's not perfect, I'm like, this is more important for me to get this message out to people than to perfect the how I say the message, right? So the same thing with mothering is we, like with yelling, right? This is how I uh, ration, rationalized it for myself when we yell at kids, when we snap at kids, when I do, <laughs> is, hey, like what would be the version of B minus work with being a mom, well, let's see, like we can divide it into a percentage of time. For example, if we look at 100% would be 24 hours in the day. And if we yell at our kids, let's say, well, let's, let's count the minutes. How many minutes out of the 24 hours do you yell at the kids? And when I look at it that way, I'm like, oh my gosh, well, I'm an amazing mom because I probably only yelled what? Like, I can't even imagine. Not even 10 minutes, right? Probably a couple minutes at a time, a couple half a minutes, right? So probably five minutes. So if you look at it that way, you're like, oh my gosh, I got a 99.9% score on being a mom. Like This is just all, of course, made up in my brain, right? I'm like, I'll be a good mom if I don't yell. So if I did yell, okay, what's the percentage that I yelled? Kind of like on a test. So what's the percentage that I failed? So 99.9. So I got almost perfect, right? So then 
it's so much easier for me to not judge myself and not feel guilty about me yelling if I look at it that way. I'm like, well, I showed up, I fed them, I took care of them, I was with them, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then I see all the 99% that I was a good mom. And then I, I look, I'm like, well, do I really have to feel guilty and beat myself up for this half a percent? Well, maybe not really, right? So I just want to offer this to you to apply this not perfect uh, style, like do B minus work in your mo- in your being a mom and give yourself permission to not be- beat yourself up if you did B minus work. Because sometimes we will do B minus work. Sometimes we will be super snappy and yell at them more like on your bad day. If you didn't spend much time with them and you yell at them most of the time, that is your worst day. You did B minus work, maybe B work. Maybe you even got a fi- like 50% out of the 100 and you got like a F or a whatever the grade is, right? You got the worst mark. Still, right? I want you to not aim for the 100, not aim for the A plus work because you are human, right? And so it's okay for us to not aim at that. So, but most days, this is what I'm saying. Most days we actually do amazing, do amazing as mothers and we do way more than B minus. We just don't see it. And when we do the B minus, you're like, Hey, I still got B minus, right? Because in class, if you get B minus like 75%, it's still pretty good right? Like, so this is just what I use like right now when I'm telling you this, I am doing this despite me uh, having doubts that this is good enough, that I didn't prepare, like all of these thoughts. But it's more important to me that you get this message today than making it perfect, right? And Um, this is right. This is for all the people who are perfectionists, right? And we all are on some level on uh, to some degree. I didn't even think I was a perfectionist until I re realized that I am scared of some things. If so, if I'm scared of some thing, um, some reaction that I'm going to get, basically I'm scared that if I don't do this perfectly, I will get this reaction, right? So this is another way we call perfectionist people in our world is they're just scared people, right? If you, if I don't make this perfect, I am really afraid of what will happen. So I'm not going to do it unless I can make it perfect, unless I can guarantee it's perfect. So this, this concept just helps us drop that perfectionist uh, idea and and um, get our work done. So our work done, right? For me, this is a business I'm running. But as a mom, for me, it helps to drop the guilt, drop the beating myself up over my imperfect mothering at some percentage of the time and enjoy just being me and being a mom, right? So that's what I want to offer to you today in in a few different words. So my mom says done is better than perfect, right? And of course, there's some situations where that's not true. For example, if you're getting a surgery done, you don't want it done better than perfect. You want it done per- as perfect as it can get so that you don't die, right? If you're on an airplane, you want your pilot to do a perfect job be- so you don't die as well, right? You don't want to be minus flight, right? You don't want him not to check over the airplane before he flies, right? Obviously, there are some places where it doesn't apply, where it's life and death situation, right? Where you're putting, like when you're sending your child to school, you want the safety of your child to be perfect, as as close to perfect as it can get. Where what I'm talking about is this, the, the rest of the life where it's a gray area for everyone and where there, we try to get everything to be perfect, but it never is. And it's okay if it's not, like no one's going to die, right? Where can you drop the guilt if you are not perfect? And where can you drop the guilt so that you can, or and the fear so that you can get your job done? All right, here's the most imperfect episode for you guys. So uh, try to do B minus work and whatever it is you're doing, you can apply it to any work, any anything that you're doing, any project, because sometimes... If you are a perfectionist, you need to just get it done rather than have it perfect, right? And, okay, I'm going to go keep going. 
And if you are somebody so who does do it, uh, get it done, and doesn't care about how perfect it is, and and you know if you're on that spectrum, right? If you are, because we are sometimes on that spectrum in some cases, right? Like if you are sloppy in the kitchen, right, and you're like, well, it's fine then maybe for you the exercise would be the other way, right? Maybe no, we're not going to try for perfect. We're going to try for B plus, right? And clean up that one thing. Hey, maybe I'm using my own example. <laughs> That's just from earlier when my husband noticed that I left the milk on the counter. Anyway, it's just funny, right? Because um, we it's it's not all or nothing. It's not like I'm either perfectionist or not a perfectionist. It's I'm on the on a spectrum. Okay, I'm going off tangent and now I'm just proving my own point that this is not a perfect episode, but do the not perfect job and allow yourself to not feel guilty if you did. Okay? Do not a perfect job. And don't feel guilty if you yelled at your kids. That's what the point I'm making. I love you all and I'll talk to you next week. Bye. 